Hello, on this video I'm going to show you how to fit the continuous link system to the Epson Stylus DX8400. So the fit method is exactly the same for the DX8450 and various other models. So I've unpacked the continuous ink system from the box uh, and took out all the bits and bobs that we're going to need from the pack. So I'm going to open the printer lid. One of the first things we need to do is to remove this cartridge cover. Uh, so this has to be removed so we can get the ink cartridges and the ink lines in. So we have provided a screwdriver in the accessory pack and what we're actually going to do, we're going to remove this clamp here. So if I put this screwdriver in here, I think you should be able to see that clamp moving just in that position there. So the tip of this is to do it very, very slowly. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to prise by twisting it to the right hand side and creating pressure. So what you have to do is you have to prise the cover off. You do need to be careful when you do this. So we've removed the cover. Uh, we're going to put that to one side uh, and that can be put back on if you ever need to. So the next thing to do is to slide the cartridge block to the left hand side just out of the way a bit. And then with the continuous ink system cartridges we're going to put it underneath the T-bar I'll put it down here on the right hand side. So just make sure when you do this that you've got a nice straight line there, there's no bends or twists, otherwise that's going to cause problems later on. So manually slide the cartridge block back over to the right hand side and then we're going to insert the cartridges. So when you insert these cartridges, basically you have to press down very firmly at the front of the back of the cartridge. These are auto reset chips so the ink levels will be monitored as normal. When you need to reset it, when it tells you the cartridge is empty, you press and hold this button for 5 seconds. You do not need to remove the continuous ink system, you just press and hold it while it's in the printer. So we're going to pop the cartridge block back in and we're going to press down and you should be listening for an audible click. If when you switch your printer on the cartridges aren't recognised, you will need to basically remove the cartridge block, pop it back in and press down very firmly at the front and at the back of the cartridge. Uh, so you should have heard that audible click then. You, sometimes you don't hear one for each cartridge, sometimes it's actually done too when you press. But basically as long as you press down firmly at the front and at the back of the cartridge, it's not going to do any harm at all. Just press down firmly and they'll be recognised. So the next thing we need to do is to install this tube clamp. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the green backing tape from it and it needs to be fixed nine, about 9 to 10 centimetres. It is in the bulk, I'm sure it's, let's just have a quick look, I'm sure it's 9 or 10 and it is quite important uh, that it is fixed in the correct, in the correct position. Yeah, it's 9 centimetres. So I'm going to try and guess about 9 but if you're not too sure, it's quite important. Get a ruler out or a measuring tape or something. Uh, if you get it wrong and it's 10 centimetres or not enough, it can cause problems. So it does need to be about 9 centimetres. So you push down very firmly on the clamp to make sure you get a good, a good adhesion. So you'll see there what I've actually done there. I've got a loop. So you should be looking for a nice straight U-shaped loop, just like that. Now what we need to do now is to check that the cartridge block can move over to the left hand side and over to the right hand side freely and is not getting snagged. So we're going to manually push the cartridge block over to the left as it would normally go. So it will normally go about, when it's during printing, possibly probably about another half an inch up that way but there's no need as long as it can reach over there, that's enough. So, and then bring it back over to the right hand side and basically just make sure that it can reach. So what you're looking at is basically if it's too tight it will be pulling on the cable and you will see the tube clamp moving. If you need to adjust the tube you can either pull it this way by holding the clamp or push it that way. So depending on which one you do, one will give it more slack or make it more tight. It depends what you need to do. But as long as it can move freely over to the left hand side and then back over to the right with no snagging it's going to be fine. So the next thing we need to do is 
part way down the line you will see a tube clip uh, so it can either be installed here or just round the side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the backing tape from this and then I'm going to fix it down here at the side of the continuous ink system just like that so the tube is coming down there and out the side of the printer so don't worry about when you shut the printer lid it's not going to trap it or stop the ink flowing you'll still be able to use the scanner and everything else so it will be installed just like that so we're nearly finished so one of the next things we need to do is to install the air filters so within your accessory pack you will see some small air filters they have a narrow pointed end and a short fat stubby end so these are your refill holes when you need to refill the system you just take this plug out and you can either use the syringe which we've provided and top it up manually or you can just pour the ink into the system these inner four plugs this is the air balance chamber and it's where the air filters go so we're going to remove the four small flat plugs from this system four. and then we're going to install the air filter so remember the air filters have to be fat end down so the small stubby end has to be inserted down these control the amount of air that gets into the system and helps push the ink down the line so we've installed that bit so we've now finished the installation of this system so it is very important that when you install these that the continuous ink system must be sat at the same level as the base of the printer if this is raised in the air for any length of time gravity will take place and it will flood your printer so it's very important that it's, it's sat at the same level as the base of the printer so we're just going to put this at the side here uh, and that's where it will stay and that is how you install the continuous ink system on the Epson Stylus DX8400 thank you